So, the Republic would have the galaxy believe that its heart is secure. Today's events, however, show that there is nothing that can stop our forces from total victory. Those were the words of General Grievous, spoken in a public Holonet address after his stunning victory in the Battle of Dura. In that battle, widely considered to be the greatest Separatist victory of the Clone Wars, Grievous' forces breached the perimeter of the Core Worlds and completely steamrolled what was supposed to be a Republic stronghold. But the Battle of Duro was just the beginning of a long nightmare for the Loyalists living in the heart of the Republic. It was just the start of the Confederacy's core campaigns, an oft-forgotten chapter of the Clone Wars in which the Republic came perilously close to collapse. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The Galactic Republic was born in the Core Worlds and in war after war, the Core, especially the region between the Corellian Run and the Polemian Trade Route, known as the Arrowhead, was the Republic's greatest stronghold. Only in the most cataclysmic wars did the Republic's enemies breach the borders of the Core Worlds. However, the outbreak of the Clone Wars shook up the usual dynamic a little. For the most part, the Core Worlds remained the Republic's well-defended heart, but a few Core Worlds seceded at the start of the conflict. Skako, the headquarters of the Techno Union and a few neighboring systems seceded when the Techno Union joined the Separatist Council, as did Forost, an important shipyard world in Coruscant's backyard that the Techno Union owned. Other Core Worlds attempted to secede during the war but were suppressed by the Republic military, with the most notable examples being Brentel IV and Esselus. The Republic was quick to contain Separatist Core Worlds. One of the first moves the Republic Navy made after Genosis was establishing blockades of the Separatist enclaves in the Core, especially Forost, which was subjected to the longest siege of the Clone Wars. But these measures alone weren't enough to keep the rest of the Core secure. Just a month into the Clone Wars, Separatist forces under General Severance X breached the Core Worlds and briefly conquered Sarapin an incredibly important core world that supplied power to Coruscant and many other city planets. Sarapin was recaptured within days, but its initial capture and the blackouts the campaign caused were an ill omen for the Loyalists in the core, a warning that they were no longer safe. There were a few other minor incursions into the core during the first half of the war, most notably the battles of Brentel IV and Esselus and two small raids on Coruscant. Those battles were just a taste of what was to come, however. Obviously, the Core Worlds had immense strategic importance, since they controlled most major trade routes, included the Republic's wealthiest, most militarized, and most politically influential worlds, and were the political foundation of the Republic. But they also had significant symbolic importance to both sides. To the Loyalists, the Core represented the Republic. To the Separatists, the Core, well, represented the Republic. Where the Loyalists saw the Core as a symbol of the Republic's prosperity and security, the Separatists saw the Core as a symbol of oppression. For millennia, the Core Worlds had pillaged the Rim, and the Separatist movement was fueled by legitimate resentment toward the Core over its exploitative practices. The Core Worlds were a symbol that unified the Separatist factions. Whatever differences Separatists had with each other, they were willing to put them aside if it meant seeing the Core burn. Nominally, the Confederacy of Independent Systems fought in the Clone Wars to secure its sovereignty, to affirm its right to secede from the Republic. But most Separatists had another reason for fighting, even if some of them would never admit it. They wanted to do to the Core what the Core had done to the Rim for centuries. This was also a goal of the Sith Lords manipulating both sides of the war, of course. Darth Sidious wanted the Separatists to ravage the Core as a means of manufacturing consent for his empire. Thus, a Separatist assault on the Core was inevitable. It came in early 20 BBY, when the Confederacy of Independent Systems was at its strongest. As the Separatists steadily gained ground in numerous theatres, General Grievous began a campaign called Operation Dirge's Lance. It began with a steady advance up the Corellian Trade Spine, one of the galaxy's most important hyperspace routes and a major Republic supply line. With the help of given astronavigators, Grievous' fleet was able to outmaneuver Loyalist defenders at every turn, advancing from the Separatist strongholds of Yagdul and Typhera in the Inner Rim all the way to the borders of the Core. The Separatist armada was enormous, composed of two entire fleets, the first and third fleets of the CIS Navy. 
At a minimum, this force would have consisted of 400 vessels and could have contained as many as 8,000. It was all led by General Grievous, who commanded every step of the offensive from the bridge of the Invisible Hand. For weeks, Operation Doge's lance traveled further and further up the trade spine, dismantling Republic supply lines in the process. Then, all hell broke loose. One day, at 0221 local time, Grievous and the vanguard of Operation Doge's lance broke through the outer defenses of the Duro system, beginning a sustained assault on one of the Republic's most important strongholds. Duro was one of the Republic's most well-defended worlds, but its defenses crumbled under Grievous' attack. The General quickly captured Duro's orbital space cities and lowered its planetary shield, allowing Separatist forces to begin a sustained bombardment of Republic military installations on the planet's surface. We've done a full video on the Battle of Duro before, so if you're interested in the details, we suggest you check that out. But suffice to say that the Republic was absolutely slaughtered at Duro. It was the most decisive Separatist victory of the entire war, and it had a massive impact on morale all over the galaxy. It terrified Loyalists, shattering their sense of security, and it emboldened the Separatists. To both Loyalists and Separatists, the meaning of the Battle of Duro was the same. The heart of the Republic was terribly vulnerable. Duro became a field headquarters of sorts for Operation Dirge's Lance, and from it, Separatist forces spread across the southern core, wreaking havoc. After Duro fell, Grievous's fleets occupied the Corellia system and then advanced in two different directions. One fleet advanced west across the southern core, moving toward Lordovia, while the other advanced north into the Arrowhead, the wealthiest and best defended part of Republic space. Grievous commanded both offensives. After Duro, Operation Dirge's Lance ravaged dozens of systems, with Grievous and the Invisible Hand being present for the conquest of 26 strategically valuable core worlds, Duro among them. Each of Operation Dirge's Lance's post-Duro offensives ended with one of General Grievous's most infamous war crimes. After conquering a string of Loyalist worlds in the Southern Core, he cornered Republic forces on Lordovia, where he ordered the release of a virulent strain of brain rot plague that exclusively affected humans. The plague wiped out the clone armies on Lordovia and killed every single human in the entire Wemel sector, which had to be quarantined to prevent the plague from spreading even further. While Republic forces were still dealing with the plague, Grievous moved on to the Arrowhead, where his forces advanced all the way to Humberin, a densely populated city planet that was one of the core founders of the Republic. Despite Humberin's massive population, Grievous subjected it to an extensive hour-long orbital bombardment which melted the planet's crust and killed virtually the entire population. These crimes terrified Loyalists, and for good reason. For millennia, the Core Worlds had thought they were safe, but General Grievous had proven capable of running roughshod all over them, humiliating Republic forces in their home territory. Not even the Sith had managed to ravage the core on such a scale. Atrocities on the scale of the bombardment of Humberine and the Lordovian brain rot plague had happened before, but not in the core, not for over 10,000 years. To loyalists in the core, it seemed that General Grievous was unfathomably cruel, hell-bent on their destruction and Worst of all, unstoppable. Operation Dirge's Lance got as far into the Core Worlds as Alderaan, though Republic forces managed to hold the line and spare Alderaan from suffering the fate of Humberin. Kakelius, a Core World close to Coruscant, was also captured by the CIS during the operation, though that campaign appears to have been isolated from the main offensives. It's unknown how exactly the operation ended, but we do know that the Republic managed to slow the Separatist advance, that Grievous eventually shifted his attention to other theaters, and that most of the Core Worlds lost in Operation Dirge's Lance were reclaimed. But the Separatist campaigns in the Core didn't end with Operation Dirge's Lance. Even as General Grievous ravaged the Southern Core, Separatist forces that had been besieged in the Northern Core began to stir. About a month after the Battle of Duro, a Techno-Union fleet under Admiral Dua Ningo broke the Foros to siege and rampaged across Sector Zero, the region containing Coruscant. Ningo's fleet was composed of nigh unstoppable Bulwark-class battleships, which were so devastating that the Republic rushed its new Victory-class Star Destroyers into action to contest them. 
The Victory Fleet, as the Republic Strike Force was called, battled the Bulwark Fleet to a draw over several core worlds before finally defeating Mingo above Anaxis. We've got a full length video about this particular campaign if you're interested in the details. The Foros campaign was ultimately the last major Separatist offensive in the core, though the Confederacy made a few other attempts at securing new footholds in the Republic's heart, most notably the battles of Rendili and Anaxis. Over the course of 20 BBY, as the Republic began to recover and gain an advantage in the Clone Wars, the gains the CIS made in its core campaigns were all reversed, but the damage had already been done. Operation Dirge's Lance and the Forost campaign were never really about territorial conquest, they were about spreading fear and having revenge. Their objective was to stick it to the Core Worlds, to ravage the Republic's heart and make loyalists all over the galaxy understand the true meaning of terror. In that regard, they were overwhelmingly successful. Many Star Wars fans have never heard of these campaigns. The stories come from source books or some of the most obscure legends tales. But hey, that's what we're here for. What do you think about Operation Dirge's Lens? Pour one out for all those who died on Humbreen, and then feel free to post your thoughts in the comments section below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.